Hello, everybody. This presentation is about a systematic literature review of metacognition and self-regulation in programming education, and thus earns the title, What Do We Think We Think We Are Doing? This is a project led by James Prather and included Brett, Michelle, Paul, Dost and I, and me, Lauren. We decided to do a systematic literature review for the same reason many people do. A lot of people seemed interested in the topic, and we figured if we could say something useful about it, then we'd get a lot of citations. So it's a win-win. Our primary motivator, though, is that the popularity of research on metacognition, self-regulation, and self-regulated learning is growing in computer science education research. To support and encourage this area of research, we wanted to take stock of existing research. I'm starting with the scope right at the beginning so there's no cho chance of disappointment later on. We included only literature from 6C venues in our systematic literature review because there's already many literature reviews on metacognition and self-regulation in general. Therefore, we wanted to build on those reviews to examine our community explicitly. Our goals for this review were to summarize the literature in programming education, identify theories and measurements for conducting research, and to highlight implications for teaching. Metacognition, self-regulation, and self-regulated learning is a mouthful, so I'll be referring to them as the higher order concept, cognitive control. Cognitive control, despite being researched for over half a century, is still ill-defined. This is because it's an internal process, it makes it difficult to observe. It's correlated with memory, motivation, emotion, and other constructs that conflate learning outcomes. And it's researched in multiple disciplines, which all emphasize a different aspect of it, making translating between disciplines difficult. In general, though, metacognition tends to refer to the knowledge about cognitive control, such as knowing which strategies for problem solving are most effective for you. Self-regulation tends to refer to executing cognitive control, such as monitoring the efficacy of a problem solving strategy. And self-regulated learning is a term used to describe the application of cognitive control to learning experiences. We had two research questions that we, especially Brett, wanted to know the answer to. The first research question, what theories have been used by the 6C community in the literature on metacognition and self-regulation in the context of programming education? The second research question, what activities and instruments that support and measure metacognition and self-regulation have been reported by the 6C community in the literature on programming education? To answer these research questions, we used a very impressive arsenal of sophisticated methodologies that I'm going to not tell you anything about for the sake of time. What you need to know is that we searched within the ACM Digital Library for keywords metacognition, self-regulation, and their variations without date restrictions. The restrictions we used were that the keyword had to appear in the body of the paper, not in only the references, and the paper had to be longer than two pages, so that it had room to sufficiently describe theory, methods, and results. We ended up reviewing 207 papers from these 10 ACM publications. We categorized these 207 papers based on how much information they included about cognitive control. Nearly two-thirds of the papers mentioned metacognition or self-regulation once, sometimes twice, as a concept related to the study, but did not elaborate more than that. We called these the passing papers because cognitive control is mentioned in passing. Some of these were innocuous, such as stating metacognition would be an interesting aspect to follow up on for future studies. But some were bold statements with an egregious lack of evidence. For example, the discussion of one paper stated, this helps to develop students' metacognition with regard to virtual classroom use, which can enhance their capacity to utilize the environment effectively. This was the only time metacognition was mentioned and Paul would very much like this to stop. About a quarter of papers, the peripheral papers, discuss cognitive control in more depth, typically in the introduction or discussion, but they were not about cognitive control, so the methods didn't measure it and the results did not include it. Paul liked these papers much better, so we analyzed them to examine the theories in previous literature that they described, but they were excluded from our in-depth analysis. The last category was Paul's favorite, the depth papers, of which there were 31. These papers described studies that explicitly included cognitive control, including measuring it and reporting findings about it. These were papers used for our in-depth analysis. We found four commonly used theories of cognitive control in papers from 60 sponsored venues. I'll focus on what makes each one unique, and more details and citations can be found in the paper. Favell's theory provides a broad definition of metacognition 
broader than education, and it's the foundation of most theories of cognitive control used in education. One interesting aspect of Flavel's theory is that he states metacognition is difficult when learners have little domain knowledge. Bandura's theory focused specifically on the role of social and environmental factors on self-regulation. He views self-regulation as a process that can override other predictors of behavior. Zimmerman's theory provides builds upon Bandura to describe a three-phase process for self-regulated learning. The three phases are plan, practice and monitor, and evaluate progress. Lastly, Pentrench and de Groot's theory also builds upon Bandura, but to include motivation. This theory uniquely includes prior knowledge activation. As I mentioned at the beginning, cognitive control is related to many different constructs that affect learning. From our review, we noted which other theories people included when they studied cognitive control to better map out these related constructs. I've pulled this table straight out of the paper, so if you'd like to know more about one of these, please refer to the paper. In the realm of motivation, related theories are self-efficacy, mindset, goal orientation, self-determination, and control value theory of emotion, achievement emotions. In the realm of cognition, cognitive development and cognitive load have been studied with cognitive control. And last, in the social realm, related models include model of school learning, social learning theory, and cognitive apprenticeship. From the education and psychology literatures on cognitive control, we've identified robust theories of cognitive control that were not commonly used in papers from 60 venues. Again, I'll focus on what makes each theory unique. Bocquert's adaptable learning model uniquely separates self-regulation and motivational regulation as two processes. Euclides' metacognitive and effective model of self-regulated learning represents person as a top-down, task as a neutral, and person and task as a bottom-up process and separate entities to represent conflicts between the three. Winnie and Hadwin's model of self-regulation treats self-regulation as an information processing task with a feedback loop from internal, from the person, and external, from the task, sources. Hadwin and colleagues' socially shared regulated learning builds upon Winnie and Hadwin's theory to include collaborative learning context and co-regulation. Each of these theories could be useful in computing education research, so we wanted to share them as potential theories to use in future research. For each paper that measured cognitive control, we recorded how they measured it. By far, Motivated Strategies for Learning Questionnaire was the most popular option. It's a series of modular, seven-point Likert subscales for various constructs, including self-efficacy, intrinsic value, test anxiety, cognitive strategy use, and self-regulation. Many researchers, however, find that it suffers from self-report bias. Other measurements include classroom assessment techniques to measure cognitive control during the learning process and self-efficacy scales, including the computer programming self-efficacy scale. Another scale is the self-regulation questionnaire, which in its later iterations focuses on academic self-regulation or self-regulation for learning. An acronym-driven scale is the Student Perceptions of Knowledge, Classroom Knowledge Building, or SPOC, which differentiates between self-regulation and lack of regulation. Less common options ask students about their beliefs and goals, which can influence cognitive control. These were the Epistemological Belief Questionnaire and the Achievement Goal Framework Questionnaire. Okay, so now that we've shared the theories and measurements that people have used, we'd like to talk about actual research findings. We analyzed the 31 depth papers, which were about cognitive control. We don't have time to summarize all 31 papers, so each team member picked their favorite finding to share with you. Brett's favorite finding was that Martin and colleagues found that only email alerts, compared to writing assignments about time management or to creating a schedule for a project, reduced late work submissions, despite the students reporting that the emails were of marginal utility. Michelle's favorite finding was that Loxa and Co. argued that instructors should help students who demonstrate flawed or a lack of self-regulation, but only after they've required some content knowledge. Paul's favorite finding was that Prather and colleagues found providing an explicit metacognitive prompt prior to programming helped students avoid making mistakes in the early stages of problem solving, and students who received prompts tended to verbalize more metacognitive behaviors. Dost and I's favorite finding was from Bagley and Chow, who found that brainstorming and devising strategies and pairs for a Java project led to differences in perceptions and outcomes between genders. 
In particular, women increased their perception that testing produces better solutions and received higher scores. My favorite finding was from Lashinsky and colleagues who considered several learner characteristics effects on performance, including self-regulation. However, they found that only self-efficacy was a direct predictor of performance. James's favorite finding was from Jan and colleagues who found that visualizations can improve self-regulation by highlighting problem-solving processes. The lowest performing students benefited the most from visualizations without affecting the highest performing students. Besides our favorite findings, we also wanted to highlight some themes that emerged from our analysis. First, metacognitive knowledge is difficult without contact knowledge. If students don't know what success looks like or possible strategies to achieve it, cognitive control doesn't offer much help. Second is that metacognition and self-regulation are direct predictors of self-efficacy, and self-efficacy is a direct predictor of performance. However, cognitive control is often not a direct predictor of performance. The literature suggests that the main benefit of improving cognitive control is improving self-efficacy. Third, and completely unsurprisingly, self-report measures of cognitive control often measure what students think they do, not what they do. And there's often a large difference between what students think they do and what they actually do. We'd like to close with some recommendations for researchers who are interested in conducting research on cognitive control. First, you should provide a clear definition of what you mean by metacognition or self-regulation based on the theory that you're using. There isn't already a canonical definition. Second, consider the related constructs that we presented here to determine if they're relevant to your work and account for them when possible. Third, select theories and measurements from those we've presented and included in the paper that best suit your work. Last, because cognitive control is difficult to observe, include multiple measurements when possible to increase the validity of your work, and don't include only self-report unless that's the only thing you're measuring. Thank you so much for watching our presentation. I'd especially like to thank Dost and I who indulged me as I sent him emails demanding that he send me silly pictures as he was moving across the country for his new position at Towson University. So congratulations, Dost and I, and we look forward to your questions.